Hi, I'm Francis Schott, and I'm talking to you from Stage Left Steak in New Brunswick, New Jersey, stageleft.com or stageleftwineshop.com. And today, I have two extraordinary bottles of wine. But this first video, I'm going to talk to you about decanting a bottle of wine, because each of these bottles needs to be decanted, and they need to be decanted for different reasons. So I thought this would be an, a perfect opportunity to talk about decanting and why to do it. So here we have... Um, uh, the first wine here is a Daniel Rion Cotonou Village Mosaic 2015. I'll tell you about that later. What you need to know about this is it's a young Burgundy from a great year. Um, and so it's only been in bottle about a year now, and uh, it's really fantastic. And we need to decant that because that needs a little bit of air. I need to give that a little bit of a benefit of oxygen because it's a very young wine. It'll be fine right out of the bottle, but it'll be better after it's had a little bit of oxygen, a little bit of air to decant a wine. It's very different. Uh, sometimes they're coincident, but you also might want to decant the wine to get the wine off sediment that has dropped in a bottle. No sediment has yet dropped in the 2015 Burgundy. Hasn't had time to develop in the bottle, hasn't had time to drop sediment. I'm not worried about sediment. You'll see here I have two different kinds of decanters. This is the decanter I'm going to put the young wine in. You'll see it is very broad, and when I fill the bottle of wine, it'll go right to the halfway mark, giving it the maximum amount, amount of surface area to, uh, so that it'll aerate, it'll accomplish my goal of aerating it. Now, the first and the simplest is I'm going to pour the Rion 2015 Burgundy. Remember, I'm not worried about sediments at all. I take the capsule right off. Um, people used to just cut the capsule below the lip, and that's the formal way of going about it. Shh. Um, so we take the capsule off because we don't really need it. Uh, and now I have a cork, as you see. And this table is a little high for decanting. We normally don't use this table for decanting. We use lower ones. I put the, the, the waiter's corkscrew. You see, I love this kind of corkscrew. It's what everybody uses. It really is easy. You put the worm in the center. You make sure it's going down the center. You, if, it, if it looks like a screw, like an actual screw with threads, it's the wrong kind of corkscrew. You'll just pull the middle out of a lot of corks. This is a bifurcated corkscrew, so I have two parts right here. So I can pull from here, and then I can pull from here, right? So I go like this. I'm in the middle, right? And I just pull straight up. I'm just using that for leverage. And I go here, and then I go down just a little further, especially with this young cork, and I go right to where uh, where it's almost about to come through. Don't worry about it if you go through the cork and you pop out the bottom. It probably will stay attached to the bottom of the cork, and even if it doesn't, the cork never killed anybody. You can get it out fairly easily. And then I go and I use both sides of the cork screw, and when I get it up to the end, I don't pull it out like this and just go pop because you can get wine on your tie. It's very dramatic. And then I just ease out the end of it, right? And especially with a younger wine, I'm not worried about the cork breaking because it's not disintegrated. Don't don't smell the cork, don't smell the cork. You know what the cork smells like? It smells like cork, okay? So with this wine, I'm not gonna use this candle. I'm not gonna use anything. I happen to know this wine really well. I, I know there's no sediment. You, you'd be like, oh look, he's being all rough with the wine. Exactly, what I'm doing is I'm trying to get a little oxygen in the wine. Now if I were doing this at your table in the dining room, uh, I might be a little more careful just because we want to be fancy, you know? You want to be fancy in the restaurant, you're paying good money for the show. But at home, don't really worry about it. And you see how this fills the decanter up to just the area where you get the maximum amount of oxygen into your wine. And so we have now decanted our Cote de Nuit Village 2015 Mosaic by Daniel Rion, so we can give it some oxygen, It'll give it a little time, I'll leave it in there for a half an hour, 40 minutes, and we'll get what we want. But here we have a Gevry Chambertin from a producer named Pierre Bory, a fils. Um, and it's uh, from the Clos de la Justice vineyard. That's a Ludi vineyard that they own. And it's an 07. Now 07, while 15 was one of the best years in Burgundy in a long, long, long time, and they're fantastic, and those wines will age for many, many years, decades. Uh, the 2007 was a difficult vintage, and Bory is a fantastic producer, and so he made a great wine. But in 2007, it being a difficult vintage, they're not long-lived wines. They're not wines for the decades. And so at, right now we're in 2008. This wine is 11 years old. It's pretty much what the French call à point or on point, right? It's time to drink it now. It really has gone through a lot of development in the bottle. Um, the, it's really showing you everything it's got right now. That's what à point means. So uh, this is the time to drink that wine. And it's probably stable for another, I don't know, four, five, seven years. But there's no reason to wait any longer, right? So I'm going to decant this wine to get it off the sediment. There's in that time of it as it's developed in the bottle, it has dropped a fine silty sediment to the bottom of the bottle. And if I just pour in each person's glass, every time I pour that little bit of silty sediment is going to rise up and claim more and more of, of, the, of the wine. And that last little bit that has sediment 
suspended in it is going to be bitter and ugly. So we want to avoid that. So what we want to do is we want to decant that wine, but because it's mature, I don't really want to give it any more oxygen. So with the capsule, I take the capsule off because I just want it out of the way. It's more important actually with this wine. Um, and then I'm going to put the cork. I put the cork in the same way. Now wait a second, though. This is an 07. I happen to know this wine very well, and the corks are in great shape. What do you do if the cork's not in great shape? That waiter's corkscrew might get you into trouble because the cork might disintegrate. My staff and we here at the, at the restaurant we use the Durand. The Durand is a really interesting way to open wines, and it works on fragile corks. Uh, I'll put the link down below where you can go buy a Durand directly. So this here is something called an asso. And the way that an asso works is you put an asso on either side of the cork and you gently bring it in and then you pull up the cork with a little twisting motion. And that's how an asso works. That's often used for older wines because it, it doesn't pull the cork from the center. It sort of holds the cork together as you're pulling it out. And it, you know, if, there's, if there's any seal or uh, uh, it's occluded at all on the outside of the bottle, the cork to the bottle, when you turn, you're pushing from the outside and you're, not, you're less likely to crack that cork. But the problem with an asso is sometimes when you're going squeaking it in side by side, you can push a cork in that's not occluded at all to the side of the glass, and you push the cork into your wine and you have a problem. This is a fantastic invention. First part is the corkscrew. It's a combination corkscrew and asso. So this goes in the same way, and it's important to get it near the center, right? Um, so you have it in about the center, and then you take the asso part of the Durand in through holes in the top, and it takes a little bit to get it in exactly right. Hold on a second, you gotta get your twisty in there exactly right, hold on. Ooh, there it is. Now, I'm going in with my asso from side to side, and I can't, the asso won't push the cork in no matter what because I have the traditional corkscrew holding onto the middle of the cork, and I have the asso holding onto the outside of the cork, so with an older bottle, it's, I mean, it's like a 90-something percent success rate in holding the cork together. I love this little thing, and uh, I recommend it highly. So, here you go. There you have your uh, wine taken out with the Durand. Now I need to use the decanter that is not going to provide a lot of oxidation. So, how do I know where the sediment is in the bottle? You always wonder, like, why they use a candle like that? Well, I'm using the candle. I'm going to be careful not to hold the wine directly over the candle because I'm not trying to roast the wine on the way out. But I'm going to start the pour down here, and I'm going to pour very carefully. And I'm looking through the bottle. See, I'm not directly over the flame, right? I'm looking through the bottle. At the bottom, because of refraction, I can see that candle right at the bottom. I can see the candle light, the flame, right at the bottom of the bottle. And as I'm pouring, I will see, I can't show you this on camera, I see just right now a little wisp of sediment coming up to the top. I take that off, I put that down, and now I have uh, my older wine, my Pierre Bory Gevray Chambertin uh, 2007 in a decanter that really isn't oxidizing at all. I mean, compare the two, right? Two very different purposes. Uh, both wines are clean. This didn't have any sediment. This did have sediment. Um, I did want to oxidize this one. I didn't want to oxidize this one. And now I have these ready for table. And uh, that's how you decant a bottle of wine. In the next video, I'm going to tell you about these two wines. They're actually for sale. You can actually buy them from me. Uh, go to stageleftwineshop.com and you can find them.